In this box is my first month of the Ultimate Succulent Club from Mountain Crest Garden. So I wanted to take you on a little tour of what it looks like and what you can expect with your first box as well. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. And the first thing you'll notice is there are um, a couple things right on the top. So we have a little brush that we they include with the first one. And then there's also cards about each type of succulent that's included in the box that I'm getting today. And the cool thing about the cards is, so on one side they'll have the picture, and then on the other side, they have the information about those succulents, how to grow them, um, just their basic care needs. And they can all be broken off into individual cards as well. And then we have the care information for the succulents, which is standard with any Mountain Crest Gardens order. And now we get to see what is actually inside. So everything in Mountain Crest Gardens is really well packaged. They put a lot of effort into making sure things arrive in great condition. And one of the ones that we are receiving today is one that can be a little bit tricky to package. And that is Kalanchoe Tomentosa. And this is, let me make sure I'm telling you correctly. This one is cinnamon. So it's not your traditional chocolate soldier, though it looks very similar. Ooh. All right, so this is Kalanchoe Tomentosa cinnamon. And it has a little bit more of a reddish hue to it than the chocolate soldier. Um, mine has been through a couple days in the box, in addition to the shipping. So that is plant number one. Let's see what we have in here. And all of the crinkle paper can be recycled. And then if you ever have one with packing peanuts from Mountain Crest Gardens, those are actually biodegradable. So you can just put them out in your garden and they will disappear as you water them. I think they're made out of cornstarch. Okay, so then we have Semper Vivum Pufelii, and this is Artemis, is what this one is called. Check my cards. And then we have Sedum Nus Bamaranium, or Copper Tone Sedum. And this is. Okay, that's what I thought. This is Echeveria Chroma. And these can vary actually quite a bit in color. Some of them are really variegated and like lots of reds and oranges, and some of them are a little bit more purple. So we got one that's a little bit more purpley, which is fun. And then, so those are the four main plants. I'm gonna move, okay, move that out of the way. And then they also have a surprise plant. Cutting. So you can see there it's a bonus and these look like they are um, a type of jade. I'm not totally sure the exact species but some jade cutting. So these will root really really easily. Anyway that'll be really fun. And I have no idea what this is. So let's find out. Oh and then this is a heat pack which I should have realized. So um, I got this shipped in November, so it was a little bit cold. So they do include a heat pack to prevent anything from freezing, um, which fortunately here in Arizona, that's not usually an issue. Um, but overall, everything looks really great. So this little brush that you got, you can just use it to brush the dirt off of these. Um, most of these actually look really good, but you can use brush just to get all of that off there and you might lose a few leaves that's pretty normal after something's been shipped so this is exciting um, I'll bring you back in a little bit once I am ready to plant these now that I have all the tools I need for planting I'm gonna go ahead and get this all planted up in this concrete planter and all of the tools and supplies that you see here I will include links below so you know where to get them if you would like to as well so this concrete planter I think will look really nice kind of with the muted tones in these different plants. So to start, I'm gonna put this uh, Kalanchoe tomentosa in the middle so that it gives it some height and then I'll put the others around it as sort of fillers. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the 
pot and you can see I'm going to break off most of the soil. Um, I'll keep as many roots as I can, but if some of them break off, that's okay. Um, and I have this filled up already with bonsai jack soil. And you can see that's just barely coming above the rim of the pot. So I'm going to put a little bit more soil in. So I want it to be up a little bit higher. Okay, so now they have this in. I'm going to fill in around it and get it to stand up by itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the soil. And I'm just gently squeezing. I'm holding the top of the plant gently and then just squeezing around the roots. And you can see this one has a lot more roots that stayed on. And that is totally fine. I'm going to remove dead leaves there. Okay, I'll stick this one in. And I like to kind of position things and then add more soil in once I am done. Sometimes you'll need to add soil in to help the plants stand up better or stay in place. Since this is pretty small, I don't think we'll have that issue. Um, I'm gonna put one of these over here on the other side, just for some continuity. And then lastly, we'll get the Artemis ready. So this one has soil right up to the edge of the leaves. So I'm just gonna kind of rub through there to try and get some of that off. Now part of the reason for pulling off the soil is because the soil that I am planting into is very gritty and I don't want the soil to be as organic as this soil is. But the other reason is these have also been growing in those little two inch pots and the roots can get really compacted. And so before you plant it, you wanna really loosen up the root ball so that the roots can spread out more easily. And you don't have to get all of the soil off, but you do wanna get a good amount off. And again, if you break off some of the roots, that's okay. But it is a good time to clean up any dead leaves or dried up leaves around the bottom. And I'm just gonna set this in and you can see there's just some roots there sitting on top. And I want all of them to be above the rim of the pot. I don't want anything sitting down in or below the rim because it can lead it um, to problems with root rot. So I'm gonna remove that a little bit. Okay. And then I think we'll add the cuttings in toward the end. And we should be good to go. So I have this soil scoop from my succulent toolkit, which is amazing by the way. One of the best things you can buy to work with succulents is the toolkit. So you get soil scoop, a couple different shovels, um, tweezers. This is one of my favorite scoops. We'll use that in a second for top dressing, but I'm actually probably gonna use it right now for the soil too, because it's just easier to scoop into there, whoops, and get things to um, get right around the roots. I'm gonna go ahead and just put soil on top of the roots and cover them almost all the way, or fill it at least almost all the way to the top. I wanna leave a little bit of space to put the cuttings in and then also to put a top dressing on. And if you're not familiar with a top dressing or that concept, it's basically just a decorative rock or sometimes people will use um, moss or things like that to cover up the top just to make it look a little bit more polished and more professional. All right, so I'm gonna remove a couple of the leaves from these cuttings because again, I don't want them down in the soil as they can rot and those will very likely propagate from leaves too. A lot of crassulas will do that. Stick this in over here. Oops, sometimes cuttings fall out, that happens. Okay, so you can see it's all pretty well in there, um, but it's kind of loose, and that is where the top dressing is gonna come in. So a lot of times um, I will go in with a chopstick or also um, one of these tools from the mini toolkit and just go in and like press down on the soil around the roots to really help it be 
stuck in there nice and tight. And that cutting does not want to stay. That's all right. Okay, now I have that all pretty well situated. So I'm gonna switch now and I have um, a, let's see, this is called Dark Pastel Top Dressing from Bonsai Jack. And what I like to do, the reason why I have it in these containers, so I can put the arrangement right in there and then just fill in. And I don't have to worry about the top dressing falling off and making a big mess. A lot of times I'll do that with the soil too. And I'm just gonna try and fill in all around here and just get this really piled up and everything really secure in there. And it's gonna seem a little bit odd at first, but then we're gonna go in and compress it again and make sure everything is in place better. So I'm just trying to fill in all the gaps, getting in between and around and underneath all the succulents. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna go in and just start with my fingers and just kind of pressing in that cutting. These cuttings again, don't wanna stay in. And that's okay, because once we let it sit, I'm not gonna be messing with it a whole lot more. And so it will be just fine to sit there and be watered. And then once it starts rooting, then it'll obviously hold itself in place better. I'm gonna use a chopstick for this and just press in around all of these and kind of press down. The nice thing about the Semper Vivum Hufelia is they are really, really sturdy. So you can press on them and knock out cuttings, um, but they do, it doesn't damage the leaves. Whereas on your Echeverias, a lot of times if you're touching those with your fingers, it'll wipe off like the farina or kind of sunscreen that's on there. And you don't necessarily want to do that. When it does go out in the sun again, then it's more likely to be damaged. The sedum doesn't have as much of that, but you do want to kind of be careful. All right, so I think that's all in there pretty well. And some of this may fall off a little bit when I'm watering or when I'm moving it, and that's okay. But you can see the plants are in there pretty snug. And we'll go ahead and put this cutting back in, put him at the top more. This is planted pretty close together. You can spread them further apart, which gives them more space to grow. They'll grow a little bit bigger, but they are perfectly fine to be planted so close together. And you can see I tried to um, distribute the colors a little bit. So we have the purples, the greens, orange, purple, green, orange all the way around. And then again, the tomatosa in the middle because it has more of the height and um, yeah, it should be good. And then you can use Again, your little brush to just brush some of the dirt off. They do tend to get messy as you're planting and that's okay. And then you can also just, as you water it, just kind of squirt off the top. If you're gonna keep it indoors, make sure to kind of blow the water off. You don't want the water to sit on the leaves for too long. It can cause problems and lead to some rot. But succulents in the wild get watered from the rain and it goes right on top of the leaves. So it's not a problem. Just make sure it doesn't stay on for very long and you should be good to go. So that is the ultimate succulent club from Mountain Crest Gardens. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share it with all of your succulent loving friends and I will see you next time.